Hi, welcome to Bedtime Stories with OPL. I'm Miss Beth. Grab your favorite stuffy, get comfy, and let's get ready for a story. all my pumpkins over here by you. Bark, bark. You want me to see if I have a story about a pumpkin? Bark. Let me see. Oh, here's one. It's called the discontented pumpkin. That's bark. a hard word. Bark, bark. It means unhappy. Oh, bark, 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 bark. All right, let's see what this is about. Jack Frost visited Farmer Crane's field one night. And the next morning, the gold of the pumpkins shone more brilliantly than ever through their silver coverings. It is of no use, said one large pumpkin to another lying beside it. It is of no use. I was never made to be cut up for pumpkin pies. I feel I was put here for something higher. What could be better than pumpkin pie? Bark. What do you mean, said the other? You never seem dissatisfied before. Bark, 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 bark. Oh, dissatisfied? Bark. That means I'm happy. Bark, 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 bark. You quite take my breath away. Well, to tell the truth, I do not like the thought of being cut up and served on a table like an ordinary pumpkin. See how large I am and what a glorious color. Tell me, did you ever see a pumpkin more beautiful? You are beautiful indeed, but I never thought of being made for anything but pies. Do tell me of what other use a pumpkin could be. Well, I've always thought that I'm not like the other pumpkins in this field. And when Farmer Crane pointed me out as the finest one he had, I heard him say, that would be a fine one for a fair. It was not till then that I really knew for what I was intended. I do remember, answered the other. Yes, I do remember hearing about some pumpkins being taken to a country fair once but I never heard how they liked it. As for myself, I should be proud to be made into delicious pies and served on a beautiful plate. How can you be satisfied with that thought? But there's Farmer Crane now. He's gathering some of the smaller pumpkins to make pies with, I think. Perhaps he knows best what you're made for, answered the other. Farmer Crane was soon at their side and was looking from one to the other. What fine pies they will make. I had better take them now, I think. And they were quickly added to the golden heap already on the wagon. How happy they all were. All but one that lay on top of the large pile. It's hard to be thrown in with these ordinary pumpkins. If I could only slip off by myself, perhaps there's at least a place at the bottom of the wagon where I can be alone. It was a long way from the top of the pile to the bed of the wagon, but it was very little trouble to slip away from the rest. It would only take a second, and then he could be away from the others. But alas, the discontented pumpkin slipped a little too far, and I'm sorry to say, soon lay on the frozen ground a shattered heap. Bark, bark. Now nobody can eat him. Bark. Dear me, said the pumpkins in one breath. See, that fine fellow has slipped off and is broken to pieces. What a feast the cows and pigs will have. <laughs> it's too bad, said one, and he was so anxious. Bark, bark, bark. That means worried or nervous. Bark, bark. And he was so anxious to be taken to a fair, added another. And here's a poem that goes along with it. Hooray for the tiny seed, hooray for the flower and vine, hooray for the golden pumpkin, yellow and plump and fine, but better than all beginnings, sure nobody can deny, is the end of the whole procession, this glorious pumpkin pie. Pop bar. Yeah. Oh, now I'm a little bit hungry. I think maybe we need one more something. Oh! No. 
Those are paper, those are paper pumpkins. It's, they won't taste good, I promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Don't eat them. Okay. Will you will you be good if I read another poem about Thanksgiving? Bark, Would you bark. like that? Bark, All bark. right. I'm going to turn around. I expect you to not eat any of my puppy. All right. This is called A Good Thanksgiving by Marion Douglas. Sit all. Thanks. Bark, bark. <laughs> I know. Said old gentleman Jay, on a Thanksgiving day, if you want a good time, then give something away. So he sent a fat turkey to Shoemaker Price. <clears throat> and the shoemaker said, what a big bird, how nice. And since a good dinner's before me, I ought to give poor widow Lee the small chicken I bought. Ooh. This fine chicken, oh see, said the pleased widow Lee. And the kindness that's in it, how precious to me. I would like to make someone as happy as I. I'll give washwoman Benny my big pumpkin pie. <gasps> bark, bark. And oh, sure, Benny said, tis the queen of all pies. Just to look at its yellow face gladdens my eyes. Now it's my turn, I think, and a sweet ginger cake for the motherless Finnegan children I'll bake. Ooh. This wasn't a good idea. I'm getting hungry. Mm. A sweet cake, all our own. Tis too good to be true, said the Finnegan children, Rose, Denny, and Hugh. It smells sweet of spice, and we'll carry a slice to poor little lame Jake, who has nothing that's nice. Oh, I thank you and thank you, said little lame Jake. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cake. Oh, such a big slice. I'll save all the crumbs and give them to each little sparrow that comes. And the sparrows, they twittered as if they would say, like old gentleman Jay, on a Thanksgiving day, if you want a good time, then give something away. Bark, bark. Are you hungry now too? Bark, bark. Oh. Yeah. I think it's probably time for some Thanksgiving leftovers before we go to bed. Bark, bark. All right, come on, let's go. I'll get you something else. Bark, bark. All right, come on, let's go. I hope you enjoyed our story tonight. We have these great stories and lots more like them at the library. Come find out where your imagination can take you. I'll see you next time. Sweet dreams.